Yeah, thank you for the introduction and thank you for the organizers for organizing this nice um, workshop. So I will speak on this joint work with Walter Gubler. So the setup that we consider is the following. So we consider K is an algebraically closed field. And the field you should have in mind is here um, something like a CP. So the completion of the algebraic closure of QP. And so we assume that there is an, a non archimedean non-trivial, complete, absolute value given on K. Then um, there's a corresponding valuation which is given by minus the log of this absolute value. So that's a homomorphism from K, uh, from the multiplicative group to its image, which we denote by gamma. So this is a dense subgroup of the real numbers because we have assumed that our field is algebraically closed. And then we take x in n dimensional algebraic variety over this uh, field K. And we want to look at, um, well, in the long term, so like something like uh, uh, local heights at, at non archimedean places. And so this is the situation we get when we have some variety over Z, when we go to Q, to QP, and then maybe also to CP. So then we want to do analysis. So we also consider X an. So this is the associated. Berkovich <coughs> analytic space. So that's a ring space which we are going to use. And then the basic technique which we want to use, as the name suggests, the tropical approach, is tropicalization. So what does tropicalization mean in this context? So we look at the following. So first of all, it's a which was introduced by Chambellois and Ducros. So moment map um, is a morphism phi from U to T for some Sariski open set U and X to an algebraic torus T, which is split, which since we are over an algebraically closed field, and which you can write like this. And M denotes the character group of this torus. So that's the homomorphisms of T to GM. And if we use this trivialization here, then of course this is nothing else but Z to the R. And we denote by N the dual group. So the associated tropicalization map in this situation is here now the following. So we call this free trop. And here we go from the analytification of this open subset to the analytification of the torus. So that's GMR analytification. And then we go from here by some map called TROP to the um, real affine space. And there's a more intrinsic way to write this here. If you don't want to choose this trivialization, then you just write an R. And uh, so let me first tell you how this looks on the on rational points of uh, GM. So if you have just a pair of rational points, then you map this here to the vector where you have minus the logarithm of the norm of the xi. 
And um, in general, this is a space of semi-norms, or, or yeah, semi-norms. And here you map the semi-norm to the vector given by minus log. And then you apply the semi-norm to the coordinate function, which is a regular function on the torus. Yeah, so every time you have some moment map, you get a map from your analytic space to some uh, real space. So now we consider an open and affine set. So let u be open and affine. And in this situation, the group M given by the invertible functions on u divided by the constant functions is a free Z module Z module of some finite rank, which I will denote by R. Um, and so this is maybe not so well known as a result, but this was proved already in 66 by, by Samuel. And now what we do is we choose a basis. So choosing a basis, F1 to FR. And here I mean I chase, choose the basis of this free lattice, and then I take lifts of them so that I really get regular functions on U. <laughs> Obtain uh, up to translation. You obtain a canonical map phi U which is given by F1 to FR. So this is now a map from U to GMR. You just take these coordinates. And you can also write this as a torus, which is given by this group M. So that's the more intrinsic description. And there are some choice you make by taking these liftings. And these choices make that the map is only well defined up to translation, yeah? But it's, it's canonical up to that. And we call the map U very affine, so called U very affine, if phi U is a closed embedding. Yeah, so these very affine sets come with a canonical embedding into a torus. And uh, now the basic idea here is that now you have, you can do real analysis on the real numbers here. You have differential forms, currents, and whatever. And you want to pull this back. But in order to do this in the right way, you first of all have to understand the image of this map. And the image of these maps, this is what, this is, what is called tropical varieties. And there's the following theorem which describes the image of this tropicalization map. And uh, so this theorem, this is due to Gieri and Groves, and Speyer and Sturmfels. And it says, if u is very affine, then what we call the tropical variety of u. So this is the phi u drop of u an. So it's the image of this tropicalization map, which I've written above. This is a tropical cycle of pure dimension n. And Bieri and Groves proved a long time ago that the image has pure dimension n. And then the fact that it's a tropical cycle was uh, shown by um, Speyer and uh, Sturmfels. And of course, in order to understand this uh, theorem, I have to tell you now what is a tropical cycle. So 
So a tropical cycle is a polyhedral complex with some extra conditions. So a polyhedral complex D on NR is a finite union of polyhedra, so finite intersection of uh, half spaces or affine half spaces, is a finite union of polyhedra such that for each polyhedron sigma and d, all closed faces of sigma are in this collection of polyhedra and the <coughs> intersection of two polyhedra in D is either empty oops is either empty or a common face. Yeah, so for example, you can just take any polyhedra and then you add all its faces and then you get a polyhedral complex. And uh, so, and then the definition of the polyhedral complex is the definition of the maximal polyhedra which are contained in this uh, complex. There's a natural ordering and the uh, maximal elements gives you the dimension. And a tropical cycle is a polyhedral complex of pure dimension n is a polyhedral complex where all the maximal polyhedra have dimension n. And then you have additional, an additional condition, which I'm going to tell you next. So, the tropical cycle C equal dm of pure dimension n on nr is an integral gamma affine a polyhedral complex D of pure dimension N together with weights yeah so we weight so inside of the polyhedral complex we have the polyhedra which have full dimension n and just these have a value a weight that's an integral number and uh, we have to choose them in such a way such that the balancing condition hold and um, the balancing condition says the following Balancing condition says, given some polyhedron 
in my polyhedral complex of co-dimension one, so of dimension n minus one, we choose for each sigma in di n, in di n, such that tau is a phase of sigma. Yeah, so this polyhedral phases, and if tau is one of the phases of sigma, then we choose a representative omega sigma tau in n sigma. So this is L sigma intersected with n. So this I haven't explained before. So each time you have some polyhedron, this polyhedron generates some affine space. And this affine space has an underlying linear space. And so this is the linear space determined by the polyhedron. Okay, and then if you intersect the, this space with this polyhedron, and if you observe this condition, which I haven't told you before, so integral gamma affine here means, integral means that the half spaces which you use to define your polyhedra can be defined by equations with um, integral coefficients. And then you can use vectors in gamma to the power n in order to do translates of these, uh, these linear spaces. And so this means then that these spaces here are, um, are at least rational vector spaces. And so if you intersect, these are again lattices here. And so you choose um, representatives here of the generator of n sigma divided by n tau. So that's a one-dimensional Z module. So you have two generators and one of them, so of the generator pointing in the direction of sigma. So one is pointing in the direction of sigma and the other one is pointing outwards. And so you two choose this one. And of course, this is only well defined up to elements in n sigma, uh, n tau, sorry. And uh, so with these choices, then you require what is called the balancing condition. So this is here 1.1. So the sum over all sigma in Cn such that the given tau is a phase of sigma, the weight of sigma times this vector here is an element in L tau. And this, the, the fact that this condition is satisfied does not depend on the choice of your representatives here. Okay, and so these conditions here, these balancing conditions, come up when you um, compute the, um, the cohomology of toric varieties. So if you compute the cohomology of toric varieties, then you can describe cohomology classes um, on a given fan by assigning weights to the, to the um, cones in this um, fan, and then you, you get the conditions like this. And this has led... These M's are the weights. These uh, M's are the weights. Didn't I put... Ah, there I wrote W. Sorry, it should be an M. M is a weight, right? Sorry? Uh, oh, CN is DN. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. That's the set of n dimensional polyhedra. <laughs> And here you take only those where tau is the phase. Sorry, where is LT? LT is, as I said before, at C. So if you have a polyhedron, there's an associated affine space. And then through this affine space, there's also linear space. And so you take this linear space. So it's a stable tropical intersection theory, which is due to Michalkin and Allerman and Rao. And it's all based on the computation of the Chow cohomology of toric varieties by Sturmfels and Fulton. 
So you have here, so the product, so you, you have a product. So if you have two tropical cycles, C1 and C2 of co-dimension L1 and L2, then you can define the tropical intersection product, and that's the tropical cycle of co-dimension L1 plus L2. And it's not like an algebraic geometry where you, um, where you would have to move or you need some moving lemma or whatever, but here you just take any cycles and you can do the intersection. And it's again a tropical cycle. Yeah, so there's the, you don't pass through any equivalence classes. The only thing maybe this I haven't said, so we will also consider tropical cycles as equivalent if one is derived from the other by a refinement of the polyhedral complex. So if you do subdivisions, then of course you want to identify. Yeah? It's all up to subdivision, and if you want to do this product, then you, you choose a polyhedral complex where both of these are defined, and that this is... Uh, this is given by suitable weights on, uh, on, the, on, this, uh, on this polyhedral complex. And uh, so there's this. There's also, there are direct images. So if F is some map from NR to NR, and this, if this is uh, integral on, and R affine, meaning that uh, it's given by, it's induced by some map, or maybe I want to, by, from, from lattices n prime to n, and uh, this is given, so this means integral, but then you're allowed to do some affine translation of this map. So if you have a map like this, then you de can, de can pull back uh, tropical cycles, and there's also a push forward for tropical cycles. Um, yeah, okay, so here I should say gamma affine because my tropical cycles should be gamma affine. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then there's one, some, one other thing. So if you have some, some function phi, which is defined on the support of this polyhedral complex, and you have some function here, which is um, piecewise... Uh, piecewise linear with integral slopes, then you can associate to this some tropical divisor phi intersected with C somehow on C. So it's of co-dimension one on the tropical cycle C. And uh, I don't want to go in the details of this. Yeah, and all of these formulas come from, the, as I said before, from the computation of the Chow cohomology of a toric variety, at least locally, where these polyhedral complexes look like, uh, like fans. So now I want to um, tell you how this was used by Antoine Chambellois and Antoine Ducro to define um, forms on um, Berkovich analytic spaces, and there's one more ingredient missing, and these are superforms who were introduced by Lagerberg. And the idea here is that now we go to some real space, but for our Kalov theory, we would like to have PQ forms nevertheless. Yeah, and so you do this in some formal way. So for some omega tilde, 
in an R as before, so some open subset, you say A P Q. These are, this is a space of superforms. So these are the P forms in the classical sense with real coefficients, tensor over C infinity of omega tilde, everything real, A Q of omega tilde. Ah, and you can also write this as C infinity omega tilde R tensor tensorized over Z with the top exterior power lambda R M tensor lambda so lambda P M tensor lambda Q M. And so you get derivatives, which we denote by d prime and two, d2 prime of by degree 1, 0, and 0, 1. So just by applying the differential either here or here, and from this representation, you can see that this is really well defined. Uh, so you get a sheaf APQ of uh, superforms, and uh, locally, if you have coordinates x1 to xn, then you write alpha as the sum over i and j as usual. Here you have some smooth function, then you have d prime xi, which do d u prime x j. And uh, yeah, OK, so this is like usual differential forms, but you have a, a second degree. And using the lattice structure, given by n, so this lattice structure induces a volume form. And um, so this makes that one we can integrate superforms of type of the maximal type RR. Yeah, so you don't want to give the details, but that's quite straightforward how to do this. And, uh, and you can do this more generally because afterwards we want to integrate also over tropical cycles. <laughs> so more generally, um, can integrate and n forms over n-dimensional polyhedra. And then you get analogs of the theorems of Stokes and Green. So then you can also define the sheaf DPQ of supercurrents. As usual, so, so you take the superforms with compact support, and then you take uh, the continuous diff, um, functionals there. So I don't want to give details here. And the tropical cycle, more general, every um, weighted polyhedral complex of dimension n induces the supercurrent delta C, which is the sum over all sigma in the n. And now you plug in the weights of this as well, times delta sigma, where delta sigma means the integration over this um, polyhedron 
and so here you get uh, yeah you get a supercurrent of type type n and the balancing condition one way of, of seeing the balancing condition is it tells you that a tropical cycle does not here really have a boundary and uh, you can see this here in the sense that if uh, the balancing condition plus Stokes formula this implies that d prime of delta c is zero and that's also d two prime d two prime of delta c and of course in general you would expect here that uh, that you get uh, something coming from the boundary, but the balancing condition means, makes that you really get zero here. Okay, so now we have collected everything so that I can give you the uh, definition of Chambellois and Ducros. So forms and currents on X n. After Chambellois and Ducot. So they do it in a slightly different way, but the result is the same. And they also do it a little bit more generally because it's not just on analytifications, but on arbitrary Berkowitz spaces. But let's not care for that. So first, so we consider we call tropical shards. V phi u, where u is very affine. in X and uh, phi U is a map from U to T S in 1.2 and B is phi U minus 1 of omega tilde for some open omega tilde in NR. And uh, you can show that th these kinds of charts have many properties of the basis of a topology. So whenever you have some analytic open set, you can find some analytic open set V, which is contained in there and the corresponding U, so that this gets a tropical chart. And you have good properties for intersections and uh, so this really allows you to describe the whole topology on the analytic space. And uh, then, then you have that um, omega, which is defined as omega tilde intersected with the tropical variety of U. This is nothing else but the phi U drop of uh, V. That comes from these things. And the spaces A, P, Q 
from omega. So now we have the, these spaces of superforms for omega tilde. Now you can restrict these superforms to this open subset of this tropical variety of this tropical complex. And, um, and then you take uh, these spaces here and then you shifify this. So in some sense, you use this tropicalization maps to pull back the classical or the theory of superforms from Lagerberg back to your analytic space. So, so these induce pre sheaves for the basis for basis of topology of x n. So I'm omitting some intermediate step here where you go over all, you fix v and then you go all, over all u. Don't want to do this here, but that's the basic idea um, of x n given by tropical charts and uh, APQ denotes again is the associated sheaf on this Berkowitz space. Yeah, so you have a B graded sheaf now. Let me say, give you some properties. So you obtain a B graded sheaf. of B-graded um, algebras with differentials D prime and D two prime. You can integrate forms of type NN. And uh, yeah, and of course you should observe here that we make no smoothness assumption. So it's not that we just introduce this on smooth Berkowitz spaces, but if you really look at the analog theory for complex spaces, we would somehow introduce these for, or, or Chambert and to cross introduce these spaces really for all, even for the smooth ones. So again. Define corresponding spaces as usual. So these are the spaces of or sheaves of super of currents. Okay, so we want to call the superforms and supercurrents if we're really in, in open subsets of NR or some real space. And if we go to the analytification, we just call this PQ forms and PQ currents. And uh, yeah, so now I've told you this for the analytification. And you can do this for more general Berkowitz spaces, but then you just have to be a little bit more careful what happens at uh, the boundary. So now we have uh, smooth forms and we have currents. And let's just look at an example how this looks in concrete terms. So given a tropical chart phi vu, Invertible functions f1 to fm in O of u star and the smooth function g from r m from r n r r to the power r to r. I just want to go to Rm, to R, and uh, the function. Now, what does a smooth function look like? So, typically something like minus log the norm of F1 minus log the norm of Fm from V to R is smooth. Yeah, so every time you do this, you get a smooth function. So all the functions which you get this way are smooth. 
And so, for example, if you look to, to green function or stuff like this, then, then you see that these are terms which really come up. Now, there's one point where you have to be very careful because when you go to manifolds, a chart is really a local trivialization. And locally, you can check everything in this one trivialization. So these are smooth functions, but not every smooth function here is of, is of this type. <coughs> it might very happen that there are other smooth functions on V where you would have to cover V by other tropical charts, and then only in each tropical chart you would have a representation like this. Yeah, but you cannot just find one trivialization where you can do everything. So each time you discuss something, you have to take more refinements, and you cannot assume that the smooth functions are given all the time this way. And uh, yeah, then a very important result that uh, the Antoine's proof is. You need a infinite number of charts for a given V, or you have uh, Well, for, for a given function, you will, you will have a, a given form. Uh, uh, well, it's at least since you have, you have varieties project, or you have some compactness uh, assumption, there will be a finite uh, number will be sufficient. Yeah, so. so now given a meromorphic function f uh, on x, the Poincaré Lelong equation holds, which is one of the starting things when you want to do a Kirchhoff geometry, and so here the Poincaré-Long equation holds, and let me here just state it in a simple form. So d prime, d2 prime, now you take minus log of the norm of f, and you take the, you take the associated current, you take this ddd, and this is the current of integration given by the divisor of f. Okay, so this is a theory which was developed by Jean Melois and Ducrot. And now let me tell you why we want to extend this. Uh, yeah, so maybe I will just uh, say this in words. So the point is now if you have some metric on a line bundle which comes from an algebraic or from a formal model and you have some, uh, let's say, even invertible section and you take the log of the norm of the section for this algebraic model, then this will not be a smooth function in this way. Yeah, so the, the natural metrics which come from algebra are uh, no smooth functions in this way, yeah? So this is, this is a problem. And so now what we do is we extend the class of smooth functions. We find something in between the smooth functions and the general currents, which is still good enough so that we have products and pullbacks and everything here. Yeah, so maybe you think of the theory of forms with logarithmic uh, singularities in, in algebraic geometry or complex uh, geometry. Yeah, so these are on the one hand that you can still do everything you can do with forms, but in principle there, there are no smooth forms, but they are currents. And uh, so this we do in a number of steps. So the algebra of delta preforms. And uh, so let omega tilde be open. in NR, then alpha 
in D of omega tilde, so um, really a current, it's called the delta preform, if If there exists uh, a family CI I of tropical cycles and uh, superforms alpha I, this is always finite families. I in I, such that we can write our current as the sum over all I in I. And now we have this superform wedge given by the current of integration over this um, tropical cycle. Yeah, so now this is something which uh, is certainly no longer a form, but uh, as we will we hope to show and convince you this is a nice class of uh, currents where you still have many operations. So there are, okay, and, and we want to write this inside of the space of currents on omega tilde, yes, and the quality of currents. So there are differentials. d prime and d2 prime. So you have differentials on the space of currents. And if you take the differential of these special forms, then the differentials brings us to something which is of the same form. Then there's a product. So you can multiply these currents, which usually you can't. So the sum i in i, alpha i wedge delta ci, multiplied with the sum over some j in J, beta J wedge delta dj. And this is by definition the sum over all i and j. And here you have alpha i wedge beta j. And now you use that you have this intersection product for tropical cycles. Yeah? And of course, there's also a pullback. So you have some f upper star with the sum alpha i and delta ci is the sum of f upper star of the alpha i which delta ci. Uh, now the point is that these are the currents on omega tilde. But what we look for are, in fact, not currents on omega tilde, but omega tilde is the open subset in NR. But we really want currents on omega, which is the tropicalization of U intersected with omega tilde. So we have to restrict these currents to the set omega. Yeah? So given. some phi u, phi u as above, the delta <coughs> preform on omega is some supercurrent alpha in D of omega such that alpha is alpha tilde wedge delta drop of u. And since this is also a tropical variety, you are, you are allowed to do this operation here uh, for some alpha tilde in P of omega tilde. And this is the set of the delta preforms on Omega tilde. Yeah, so 
Now we do some intersection to go uh, down there. <laughs> there is a, a tropical Poincaré Le Long formula. which I will not write because I have no time. But you, uh, yeah, you get somehow the same statement as in the classical sense, but now for these tropical cycles. Uh, instead, let me tell you now how you are going to, to generalize this. So 1.11 delta forms and delta currents. So so given the morphism f from x prime to s of k varieties and tropical charts v prime uh, v u prime on x prime and v p u on x such that uh, f n of v prime n is contained in uh, in v and f of u prime is contained in u then you get a commutative diagram so you have V prime goes in U prime analytification. V goes here in the analytification. Here you have the analytification. You get an induced map here. And now you have the tropicalization. V U prime trop and uh, V U trop. And then you go to M prime R and n r and this map here this will always be integral and gamma affine and uh, then there's a formula of Sturmfels and Tevelev which was generalized by Baker, Payne and Rabinov here and um, this says that um, a flora star of the tropical variety of U prime is the tropical variety of V. And uh, of course, now you have the hope. So here you have some map F over here. And so you can hope that you can pull back differential forms here and that you make a compatible theory so that you can localize. So now we want to sheafify this theory of, of delta preforms. So, um, choose some omega tilde in an R as above with um, omega tilde intersected with prop of U is phi U prop of V. 
and this we denote also by omega, then we define basically p of v phi u. That's not really true, but you should think of as defining this as p of um, omega. We have to remember a little bit more because when we want to pull back, we have all these operations on nr, but we do not have all this theory on the tropical varieties. Yeah, so there's intersection theory, everything you have on R, but not on the tropical variety. And the forms on the tropical variety are given by restriction. So here you have to remember a little bit more from the lifting in order to pull back your forms and everything. But I don't want to go into this here. So then you do sheafification. <coughs> Yeah, first of all, for a given V, you take the limit over all U, then you get some group, and then you take you get a pre-sheaf for the topology given by this V, and then you sheafify. So the sheafification gives you the sheaf um, B P Q of delta forms on x n. Yeah, so you get a sheaf of spaces here. And uh, let me just say a few words about the structure here. So we get a sheaf B direct sum. Uh, it's B graded. We have differentials d prime and d2 prime, which, match, which map delta forms to delta forms. Um, you have products if you define this in the right way, you get um, pullbacks and uh, yeah, and then uh, then when you want to develop the theory, you sometimes want to evaluate um, currents on delta forms. But of course you can't because delta forms are not really forms. So then we also introduce a corresponding theory of delta currents. Yeah? So the, the sheaf EPQ. of delta currents on is x n associates <coughs> with um, w in x n open the set e p q of w. So these are the continuous homomorphisms from delta forms with compact support to the real numbers. And then, of course, you have to tell here what the right notion of a convergence is, so you, or, or continuity means. And um, so the idea is, so you have to tell one, when some family of forms, um, so first of all, you have to do this through the chart and so on. So in the end, you have to tell when some family of uh, Delta preforms converges to some, uh, and we just do it in this special case, so alpha i wedge delta ci. So we just require something in the situation where these tropical cycles are always the same, and then we require that the differential forms, which we have here as coefficients, that those converge in the sense which we usually require when you consider the, the definition of currents. Okay, so this is, uh, my time is up anyway, and so this is the definition of uh, delta forms and delta currents, and uh, then Walter has the next talk to explain you why uh, it's useful to have this. Thank you.
what do you have in addition to the uh, the original contrary law formula because it only has the prisoner so you say the local of the norm no it's it's it's, it's just another setup so the classical so so the well, so the new point is that now you're not just allowed to, to plug in differential forms. So you can see the poincare really long equation as an equation of currents. And here, it's an, in, if you interpret it in the right way, it becomes an equation of delta currents. Yeah, so you're, you're no, not only allowed to plug in differential forms there, but you're also allowed to, to plug in uh, currents in this formula. And then this, this everything is made so that that the, the terms still make sense, and so then you get this formula. Yeah, but, but the main motivation, I mean, there's something similar where, where this uh, comes up. So if you study, for example, toric varieties, then the, if you study toric varieties, then the natural metrics are continuous, but not the infinity. And so you have need some additional theory. So there you use this Bedford-Taylor theory when you want to do arithmetic um, intersection numbers, and you do some ad approximation process. And here with this theory, you, you replace this approximation process somehow by, by using um, yeah, tropical intersection theory, which comes, of course, here in these definitions strongly.